previous Indian summer that we never got. I don't think you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> Politically correct. correct. Um, sorry. Um, it's about that warm <laughs> summer after the summer that we never no, got. I, fall. Me too. Um, yeah, you got to be careful nowadays, yeah, and I am a, a, a bad one for not. What, did I say something wrong again? Nope. Oh, um, I'm a bad one for not thinking before I open my mouth. And these days, man, you can get in all we kinds of trouble. There will be people picketing out here in no time. Just, I might call somebody a crappie, and there I go. You know, <laughs> who knows? Mark Cornelli. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, last week, if you joined us, um, was our second, was that our second of the reproduction yep. fish? And uh, we had a little fishing excursion, and um, we were going, we were, if you saw the great big muskie that we didn't catch and didn't mold for you, um, we were reduced to a couple little panfish, but we, we kind of demonstrated how to make your own reproduction fish. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter uh, if it's a little fish, a big fish, the process for us is the same. Sometimes we will change materials um, for reasons like weight or... Uh, quickness of setting or availability of, you know, whatever we have. Um, this is a, a purchased reproduction bluegill from Waters by Klaus, and really, it was really nice. They have really nice reproductions, and, and uh, we purchased this and put it together for a demonstration, I think, one time. And <clears throat> but you can make your own. They're very easy to make, and once mm -hmm. you have a technique down, and if you go back to uh, our first segment of this um, making the reproduction fish and just follow us along it's something that you know don't start on a customer's fish or anything like that but um, if you get something of your own special preferably something small don't start out yeah, with anything no. too overwhelming like I said one of my first reproductions that I did was a paddlefish and it was like 50 pound paddlefish and it was monumental, and I didn't know what I was doing, and I managed it's to get big. it done, and it's still in our showroom. But uh, um, little would have been way easier to cut your teeth on and, and learn yeah. different things. Um, we talked about a bedding material, and when you make a reproduction fish for us, typically it involves um, cutting off the paired fins, your pelvic mm -hmm. fins and your pectoral fins, and then... Um, you want to bed that fish. You want to lay it halfway into um, a bedding material. And we had high fiber for years and years and years. Like I said before that, we used to use asbestos, and high fiber went away. And several companies have come up with substitutes of high fiber because high fiber was a good product when we were, had it available to us. But uh, several companies came up with substitutes, and we never had one that measured up. And the bad part of it is one company came up with a substitute before I knew there was a substitute, and I bought a lot of it, of the <laughs> old product, yes. which really wasn't the old product. It was the new substitute, which wasn't very good, and now it's piled in boxes with my good stuff, and I don't know which and is which. So the only way to what? do it is to soak it up, and so that can be a problem too. Yeah. But thank goodness for Mike Grady. Mike Grady um, yep. developed... Premium bedding fiber, and this is the closest and even better than high fiber. And uh, we got a sample of it and and tried it when Mike sent it to us. He said, give it a try and tell us what you think. And we played with it and mixed it with water, and it's as, it's as good yeah. as anything we've ever had to, to bed fish in. And it's pretty difficult to make a reproduction fish without some kind of bedding material. You can use sand, you can use um, cellulose insulation, you can use all different kinds of things, but nothing is as nice as when you could smooth out a very, very yeah. nice shelf. And uh, this is from Mike Grady, uh, premium bedding fiber, and you never throw this stuff away. So buy a couple bags of it once you re-soak it in, or yeah. soak it up in water. Um, spread it out, use it. When you're done with it, uh, we just put it all in a five-gallon bucket and we use it over and over and over and over. Let it dry out. It'll dry out to uh, powder consistency. When you want to use it again, um, add water, stir it up, get it all creamy again, and use it over and over and over. And pretty decent tip for them, too. We've got some in two-gallon Ziplocs. 
that we keep in the fridge. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it stays really nice in the fridge, and it's ready for you all the time. We've had some in there for, I don't know, probably eight, ten months. It stays good. And it's real good. It doesn't get mildewy. We've frozen um, it. Yep. We've, we've frozen it. Yep. Um, and, uh, it but it works, works great. It works great. And uh, it'll give you a really nice ledge and make your mold, give you a professional mold, which is kind of important when it comes to reproduction fish. So we caught these little fish. And last week, if you look at the last, <laughs> I think the first session, we laid one up in, in our premium mm -hmm. bedding fiber yeah. and um, poured auto body putty over it. That gave us something that looked a little bit like this. If you go back and watch, something like this with the bedding material out to the outside. Then once the auto body, now we thinned our auto body putty with polyester resin mm -hmm. so that it's nice and creamy and pourable. If you use straight auto body putty, you're going to get it very, very thick and thick will cook your fish before yeah. you're ready to eat. Probably a lot of bubbles too. And where bubbles it comes too, together. yeah. Yep. And so we poured it on as thin as we could. When you thin it with polyester resin, it takes a little longer to set up. Then we put a couple layers of fiberglass mat. And fiberglass mat, um, Bondo isn't all that strong. It's, I compare it to potato chips, but it's stronger than potato chips, but it can break very easy. You don't want to go to all this work and have it break. So we put a couple layers of fiberglass mat with the heat of the Bondo. The fiberglass mat sets up pretty fast. Mm -hmm. We flipped it over. Now we had something like this. You're going to have all kinds of little frayed fiberglass and flanges and, and auto body putty irregular you know, trim around there. Um, sometimes we'll take it over to the bandsaw and we'll just run it around. That auto body putty um, will trim really easy. So now we have the fish in here and you have your first half of the mold. And it's very important, you got to put a mold release on this before you pour the other one. Um, or if they stick together, you're going to have a customer's cooked fish in there and no way of getting it out. Bondo sandwich. And that stuff happens to <laughs> the best of us. Um, <laughs> Bondo <laughs> fish easily. sandwich, yeah. Um, so then we use paste wax, works really well. And you're just going to yeah. do the ledge, everything with paste wax. We don't even buff it off, just let it put it on there just so you got a nice coating. Um, <clears throat> uh, you can use soap. We've used like Dawn, yeah. we always have Dawn soap for washing our birds. You can put a little Dawn soap on here. Anything to keep A from sticking to B. Yep. Now that, it shouldn't stick to the fish. Never seems to stick to the fish. Um, where we do see it stick to the fish is if you pour it kind of thick and the fish starts to cook, it fuses with the fish. And sometimes scales start raising and yeah. They get stuck in the bondo, so thin to win on your bondo. So then we pour the other half, and I think that's about where we left them from the first yeah. segment. Um, so you got two halves. Before, a little tip, if you can follow my explanation. Um, when the fish was laying in here, before we poured half two, took a little drill bit, and we drilled every two, two and a half inches, a small hole, small hole, all the way around the fish, like this. You see the small holes. Okay, then when we waxed it, wax plugged up those holes, um, we poured the other half of the fish. Now before we took him apart, I could drill holes in here now because I want to screw it together, but what if I go through a fin? That's happened to the best of us too. <laughs> More um, than once. So then, I, I had my holes on this side, so I just punched the holes all the way down through. Now I have holes through, and because I did it on the first half and could see where the fish was, I didn't drill through fins. Now um, we take it over to the bandsaw, and we cut that again. Be cut on the outside of your little drill holes so that you don't cut a fin off. Happens, Happens to the best to of us, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, then it's time to take it apart. Yes. Take it apart, and you end up with a mold like such. Then it's time to make the, the part. Yeah. Now we're into part two, right? Now we're into part two. See, why, why do they have to even watch part one and part two? I <laughs> do such a good dive, job of describing everything. Your recap. <laughs> I should probably speed up. Okay, talk this fast. Okay, next thing you're going to do is um, you're going to make the part. 
okay, this is your, your mold, now we're gonna make the cast of this fish. So um, most of the time we put on three, four, five coats of paste wax, correct? Mm -hmm. And we use part all paste wax, um, just like Karate Kid, wipe on, let it dry really, really good. If you're in a hurry, hit it with a hairdryer, buff it off. Three coats, minimum. You want this fish to come out. Shiny, shiny. Shiny, so you can it's see wax yourself. To glow. Um, then I like to use um, a mold release like Isocote, and this is actually a, a paraffin, like a wax, in a solvent, aerosol, and we've used Isocote for, it's changed the names a few times during the course of having it, but uh, it's been Isocote for a few years now. But uh, we give it a dusting of that. That's just one more mold release. Or? Is there another one? PVA. Yep. Sure. You're going to show them? No. Mm, I don't know. Put it away from <laughs> Put it away and put it away. <laughs> um, um. Okay. So then to make the fish, this is what you're going to end up with, something like this. Now you'll notice that um, part of the fish is white, part of the fish is transparent clear. Um, that's two different kind of resins. And we used um, innovative polymers. 30-30 mm -hmm. is the white and it yeah. sets up um, reasonably flat, fast, I'd say seven to 10 minutes. Um, the more clear is 3080, it's a different kind, they're equal parts, you mix A and B together, stir it up, when you start feeling it heat up in the cup, um, pour it on the fins. So we did, we poured the white in and rotated it around like this without spilling it all over, and when that set up, that gave a really nice coat, probably as thick as a, over a sixteenth of an inch thick. I would like a couple of those in there. We did that to both sides. And then um, you go back and watch, but then we did the clear, and then we did a splash coat in here, put it together, and carefully screwed it without breaking it. If you screw it, I usually set the torque on, on those uh, Milwaukee drills, have that little, you know, torque set up so you can't tighten things too, too tight and screwed it together. Now, another tip for you, when you make your two halves of your mold, you'll come in in the next morning, take your fish out, you're really proud of everything, you wash it all up, let it dry, only to find you have a big crack between mold half A and mold half B. Um, what we found is take that mold, put it in the oven, our oven goes down to 170 degrees, 170 degrees for 15, 20 minutes. Put your screws in. This is turned, is softened, and you will end up with no crack, which will end up with no seam. Yeah, and that's, that's a, a huge helpful help. little thing. So this is one of the fish we made last week, and we have the 3030 and the 3080 in here. We have not looked at this fish, so this is pretty scary, scary to do on live are live. You're gonna do it? We're fearless. Oh my gosh. We have a backup just in case. We have a backup, yeah, that's good. And not only do you not want to over tighten, um, but you don't want to strip out those screws either. Yeah. Um, if you do, you can either drill them out or you can put through bolts in them too. I'm a little wing nut or something. And we used to make fish out of plaster molds. And any of you who've never done that, try plaster sometime. Plaster picks up unbelievable detail. <laughs> really, really good detail. Fingerprints detail. But uh, it's a little tricky to work with. And a plaster mold, you do not get as many masters out of, or, you know, yeah. parts out of it. Okay. Now, I'm gonna look and, I'm looking, I can see a little hairline crack here. I'm usually careful with my molds not to use metal tools. I'm gonna stick my knife in this little hairline crack, and it went in good, and it parted real easy. I didn't put any force forward. That looked really easy. <laughs> Hush. Oh. oh, okay. That did look easy, didn't it? That looked really easy. So here's, this is the backside of the fish. We lost some scales on the backside of the fish. We've got a few air bubbles in the tail. Okay. 
And now we're going to take, this is the part you don't want to do on live. You just keep talking while I <laughs> fumble through this. And then don't get um, rammy. Little by little, you're going to. And you're using the wood tools so that they don't scar the fish or the bondo. Mm -hmm. Correct. And I stuck, I stuck one in there. I can feel it start to give. You notice this white along here? That's latex caulk. It'll rub right off. But before we put the two mold halves together, we take a little um, syringe, curved tip syringe like this, and run a bead of latex caulk around. That way, when you put your resin in and you're twirling it, it's, if it yep. comes out the seam, you don't spill it all over you. Okay, and I'll usually try three or four of these little sticks. Now this one has sat for quite a while. And I've got um, three air bubbles in the tail and one down here that I'm going to have to fix. And they're on the inside. They wouldn't have to be. And you can paint over them. But you could inject a little resin in there yeah, if you wanted to. Um, this has sat in here for a while. If it was fresh, this uh, 30, 80 cuts like, cuts like butter. This is not. This one's sat in here for quite a while. But you just trim the whole fish all the way around like that. And then we're going to dremel. This is a wider seam than I would like. It's a pretty wide seam. Um, the one over there that we're going to demonstrate on. Um, and it's how tight, how much you tighten those screws, too. Oh, sure. Is how wide it's going to be. But that's what you're going to get up, come up with. We used to um, buy fish reproductions, and this is how they came. And I had a guy walk in the door one time, and he said, I just bought a couple of fish reproductions from this company, and um, they told me that you were the guy to paint them. And what do you got? Big marlin, you know, great <laughs> big marlin. And uh, I said, all I got to do is paint them. I said, they're ready to paint. And he said, yep, ready to paint. Just picked them up. They said, take them over to Matuska's. He'll paint them for you. And I said, OK, we'll bring them in. So we took two of us to carry one. And uh, they had this on them. And it was all fiberglass. There was no 30, 80 trimmable stuff. It was nothing but saw and grind and fiberglass tools uh. to clean the flashing off. <clears throat> but anyway, this is what you're going to get. So when you pull it out, it's not going to be store-bought pretty, but you're going to make it that way soon. Oh, yeah. So once, once we get it to this point, then we trim it all up, do as much detail on the fins as you want. Um, it's going to take a Dremel tool. Yeah. And I have to have kind of good glasses in that clear stuff because I can hardly see on those thin little fins. Me too. Those are thin <laughs> fins, aren't they? They're very thin. That was the crappie we made. Very thin. Very, very thin. So we got a pile of these little bluegills going here. <clears throat> the next thing, um, at some point, we need to fasten him so we can work on him. Yep. Now, you can, you can do all your sanding on the seam, and you can work on your tools it, like you want to hold him like that. But if you want to put him on a, on a stand like this, um, we'll show you how I would do that. And I'm going to take a wire. Most of our fish that we do, we put them on, even if we put them on a panel, we use a wire because yeah. you can tip them up, you can tip them down, you can do all kinds of different things. Um, I'm going to drill a hole. We'll do this one right in the middle of the back for a wire. The wire is going to go up into his head, and I'm going to pour resin up in there, and then I'm going to twirl it around until the resin sets, and then my wire is going to be in there nice and sturdy. And this is going to be a annealed wire we like to use in our fish because it's something that we can bend real easy. Um, wire, they could also use the little pedestal rod we showed with the golden eye yeah. project. Yes. Um, that works pretty good. We've done that before, too. Um, kind of similar installation. Just pick a spot. Um, yeah, we, we do both of those, especially if, if you're going to connect a fish to another fish and you want it to slip together, those little pedestal rods are really nice to work on. Okay, so I'm going to 
have that wire go in through the back towards the tail. So I'm going to drill a hole. I'm going to keep it out of the way of my pectoral fin. Don't come through the front of the fish. <laughs> I'm going to angle my hole a little bit. I'm going to put a little curve in my wire to make the corner and see if I can't feed it way up in there. Okay, I think that's going to work. Okay, now I'm going to, you can fasten that in any manner, but I'm going to have that wire go all the way back to the tail, and I'm going to put the same 3030 material in there that we used here, and actually I'll use polycast, which is similar sure. that we carry. Um, it's a little bit faster setting, and um, that will fuse that whole wire in the back part of the tail. Now, on a big fish, you'd have to maybe come up with something different because you don't want to fish half, f fill half the fish with some kind of epoxy material. And this is just a two-part urethane? Um, this is. And this is um, the 3030 that we use, like I said, sets up in, I said 7 to 10, but it's probably longer than that. It's probably 10 to 12 yeah. minutes. Polycast, which is what our bird heads are made of, um, polycast sets up in probably 5 or 6. Or slower when you want it to. <laughs> now I mixed enough for a big walleye, but... Okay, now I'm going to inject that into this tail. Um, now I did on, on this fish the seam, I had a little part of the seam that had to be patched, so oh. I fixed that before live today so that I don't have resin running all over as I'm twirling it. So this is just a curved tip syringe. I stuck a pin in the end. I cut it off a little bit. I'm going to mix A and B together. You girls should know how to do any I, kind of taxidermy <laughs> project that comes along with what we show you. Every I was day. just thinking we could probably sit down and recreate it, but I don't think people would learn as much. Oh, I think so. <laughs> She wasn't paying attention. That's the, she was talking to me. <laughs> it looks really liquidy. It's the uh, polycast. Polycast. I've worked with polycast a lot, and I just didn't, don't remember it being so liquidy. But you didn't mix it together. Just a little. Yeah. Yeah. The oh. A and the B. Missed it. Caitlin, you just trying to me. Now, why can't you use Bondo or... You could. You could. I could do my own. Um, nice that this is as thin as it is, so it can inject into that small hole. And dries um, away. Yep. Well, and it's on the inside, so that part, probably not as important, but it'll set up nice and fast. And, and the nice thing about polycast is it doesn't shrink, so it will have a good hard bond around this wire. Okay, now I'm thinking if I were to just roll that back and forth, it's going to fuse to that wire. I can even put a little more in if I want. From doing the polycast through the syringe instead of, or did you mix it in a cup? Because I seriously missed this part. You mixed it in the cup and then in, and then poured it into the syringe. Can you mix it from put one in and then the other and yeah, have it do the sure, same? Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. And it'll mix fine without. You mean like into the syringe? A lot yep. of people do exactly. like suck it up yes. part way and then suck up yes. the other half and shake it up. Sure. Yeah. And it won't be gelled afterwards by now. People do that with um, our uh, bird foot injection fluid quite a bit. Yeah. Okay, now I'm just going to rotate that 
around a little bit, and that's going to give me something like that. We do all of our fish like, yeah. yeah. So we now have this one, which was done earlier, just so that it's nice and strong. For the cooking had show. Some time to, uh, had some time to cure, so that's what we have. And the poly doesn't expand any? No. Nope. Nope. And if you don't try to put too much in, it doesn't spill all over either. <laughs> but if you don't put enough in. Okay, now we're just going to let that set, maybe at an angle. And that's going to harden up, and it's going to be just like yep. you have there. Yep. And so if we pick this up from there, we need to anchor this down onto a mounting stand, which for us, this is... Tom just said, but this is how we do almost all of our fish, even if they're going to go on a big stand. We'll put them on this first, and then that way we can run some screws into it. But um, very simple. We'll just take the wire through the back, like so. Just to give you an example, this is a yeah. big smallmouth, and uh, it's got a 8 gauge, 6? I'd say maybe 6, yeah. Um, it's heavy. It's, that's a heavy, that's a heavy, heavy, heavy wire. Yeah. Yeah, and then we just, we leave the wire plenty long so that you can use that in any of your other applications if you wanted to leave him suspended, leave him out with, um, with habitat or uh, anything that way. We'll leave plenty of wire and we'll just put him up here. We have a hole drilled through our two by two that's bigger than the wire size. Don't make that too tight because we're gonna bend this. And then once we try to straighten it out and pull it back through, um, if it's too tight, it becomes very difficult to do that. Um, and I might even tighten them up a little bit here. And if you just give yourself a little room to work back there. Yeah. Yeah. And so we'll bend that down tight to the two by two. And we're going to put a couple screws in the back and the screws are going to be on either side. Now, some people will take a stapler and go bang, 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 and that will That'll hold it in place. I hate having to remove those staples later, but. Um. Put one in here so that the screw overlaps the wire on one side. And then we're gonna put one on the other side and kind of sandwich that wire in place. This was shown to me by Jim Kimball 20 oh, years bet. ago or more. And uh, we've kind of used it on just about everything. I mean, it's exceptional way of attaching yeah. birds, flying birds, um, yeah. fish, everything. It's, it's great. Yeah. So, um, and now we have the flexibility of moving that wire up or down or back and forth if we had it on our habitat. But we have a really nice solid connection that we can... Um, that we can rely on as we're doing our finished work. And that wire will stick with it all the way to the finished habitat piece. Yep, yep. And you can take it off if you feel the need to take it off. You just loosen those screws and the wire comes right out. Yep. So now um, we're ready to start um, doing, finishing, addressing the seam, setting your eyes, taking care of any shrinkage if you have some, which with good fresh specimens you shouldn't have much, but you might have some little fixits or repairs. Um, we've got a couple scales on the backside we, we may or may not fix, um, but now would be the time to do all of that prior to um, painting. Mm -hmm. Should we do some? Sure, go ahead and talk about eyes a little bit. Um, Whenever, whenever we teach people with eyes, you know, what to do with eyes, we always have them, when they make the pattern of the fish, if it's going to be a skin mount, measure, measure, your eyes. measure the, yeah, absolutely. the iris size and the base size of the whole eye. Um, then when you order, it's not, you know, then you're not guessing. Um, I always say a lot of people have to order the one bigger and the one smaller and uh, the one in between. Keep them in between. Yeah. Um, eyes can be a little bit of a challenge just because um, the eye itself is larger in reality than the opening that we, that we show on the fish. So um, if you ordered according to the hole, um, you would have to fill that with a 
if this measured 10 millimeters or 8 millimeters from the outside edge of the hole to the inside edge of the hole, um, if you ordered an 8 millimeter eye, you would struggle because that measurement is only taken of the iris, the colored portion. There is a portion of the eye orbit or of the eye that is larger than the hole. And we can kind of cover that a little bit more in depth. We've done that on the, I think on our large mouth finishing, maybe a couple others. So if the eye on a real fish was not gushy and was solid, mm -hmm. and the fish was not gushy and was solid, mm -hmm. that eye couldn't come out, could it? Because it's much larger than the hole that's trying to come out from. So really, to do it right, you maybe should almost set the eye from behind. From the inside. And I know I've seen several people that like to do that um, with their reproduction heads. When they make a head separate, they'll tremble out the, the eye orbit and set the mm -hmm. eye from the inside. That makes of a the lot head. of sense. Um, we didn't do that. And we don't want to for. No. <laughs> um, but uh, so what we've got to do, we actually mold it over the, over the real eye. I suppose they could take it out yes, they could. if they wanted to, but then you would kind of probably compromise the integrity of the cheek and some of that shape. So um, at this point, we have to remove that, the cast portion of the eye so that we can put a artificial eye in, and we're just gonna use a Dremel to do that. Um, I'm gonna use a little cut saw bit. This is, what would you call that one? I think that's a it's course. It's a cylinder course. Yep, yep, we have them in a little Christmas tree conical, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, and these bits are the best. They're great. Um, they will last as long as probably you or I will. I know, we've never um, thrown them away. I mean, you can take them and they do um, load up with material like the epoxy yep. and you soak them in a little bit of lacquer thinner and wire brush them and they're yep. brand new. Come right out like brand new. So, Stainless um, steel? Hmm? What are they? Um, carbide, are they carbide? Yeah, they're yeah. carbide, I'm yep, sorry. they're carbide, yeah. Um, so they work really well. So I'm gonna do that, it'll be a little bit loud. I don't know if Kate can turn my mic down, but that might be nice. We got all this fancy equipment that we're just kind of working through, so let's see if this works. Am I quiet now? <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and take out um, just one. Mandy can get over here. I'm going to start in the middle. And I'm just going to take out the eye itself. I'm being real careful not to damage the edge or go too far, but if you did, you can always repair that later with an epoxy material. And because, just like Tom said, the eye itself is actually larger than the hole, I'm going to open this hole up on the inside a little bit more than it is on the outside just by angling the, the tool. Once you've done this a time or two, this is second nature. It'll take you only a minute or two to get this all accomplished. Is it hollow? It is not. Isn't it? It is not. We worried about that, um, whether it would be hollow. Um, just because that makes it a little harder to set the eye, but um, we have enough material up here in the front that will support it. I'm just going to take a little extra care to open this. Nothing hard. Oh, my wire. Did you find my wire? I think I found your wire. <laughs> Forgot about that. There we go. Okay. So now I won't make you watch doing the other ones, but um, 
we now Grab have. That up thing. Yeah. Can they see that? Yep, I got it. Perfect. All right. So now we've got a couple eyes here, and these are flex eyes. Mm -hmm. um, Wayne Cooper. Um, available, we've got them through most of your um, warm water species, cold water. Um, yeah, several versions of trout and, and all the warm water fish. Yep. And we carry both, we carry glass, we carry the flex eye, we carry the acrylic eye from Reinhardt, um, and we also carry Jeff Lumsden's yep. lenses, which you can paint yourself. So um, that was um, that was a fun live, and we should oh, do we that again that. because we enjoyed doing it. Um, that was fun painting eyes. Yes. Um, if it's hollow, would you fill it with clay to help in setting the eye? Yeah, something. Um, I would probably go for foam, a little tiny bit of foam, and pour it in, let it foam out, and then yep. dig it out. Um, clay would be fine as long as the clay doesn't come loose Fall on loose. the inside and rattle and things. Unless you're making fish and lures, and then sometimes the rattle's nice. I like my rattle baits. Um, so as you can see, we've got two sizes here. And one is a little on the small side. And this is a six. Want me to run and get you a pair of sevens? Yes, please. Our new line of odd sizes. Um, Odds are odd Don't eyes. Don't even say so, that in front of Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> um, the nice thing is um, the flex eye we can trim, and that's something that's, that is easily done with a pair of scissors. Um, this is a little bit larger than the eye opening, so I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to cut a little bit out. Um, we've gone into detail a little bit on eye anatomy on other episodes, so we don't have to go too far into that. But we will note, Mandy, you might want to look at this one. Um, if you can see that up nice and close. Yeah. Got it. The pupil is actually pointed slightly. And so right here is the front of that pupil. So it will sit horizontal this way. It will be a little bit pear-shaped, typically a little bigger in the back. And then, um, so we'll have that facing front. We're just going to bring that right up there. And because I know that's the front, I'm going to trim a little bit off the bottom of this eye. And I'll come in right here and just try to take the edge of that. Um, you'll notice there's a little flared edge to the flex eye at the bottom where they came out of the mole. So if that's in your way, just trim it right up. And you might have to test fit this just a little bit. Um, I feel like I'm still a little bit large, so I'll trim this up a little bit more. And then I might open the hole just a tiny bit more, too. Flex eyes have been around for a long, long time. And uh, I think that a long time ago, um, Tom Sexton did an article where you mount a fish and you put foam in the, like the gray neck foam. Yeah in the eye socket and then you set the rubber eye, flexizer rubber, silicone, and in against that foam and let the fish's real skin dry down to it. And, and it, we did that for a long time. And the rubber kind of pushes back yeah. against the edge yeah. to hold the shape. It's the concept like the was theory. good. Yeah. It usually worked good for one of the two eyes, <laughs> never for both. Um, so I'm just test fitting this. It looks like I need to open it up just a tiny bit more. I'm going to do that quick. I won't make you zoom in and watch, but open that up just a bit now. Gary Brett's watching and says, Brett's using a flex eye, question mark, yeah. no hey, painting. Hey, hey. No painting, Gary, no painting. <laughs> um, 
In the old days, we did no, we only put in one eye. Oh, we never used to do two eyes. I think there's some super amazing, talented taxidermists out there today that still only put one eye in there. Um, I'm going to set this in clay, epoxy, called clay. I still think that's confusing. <laughs> um, but this is uh, from Angler's Artistry from Ricky, and it's just it's great stuff. It's really, really good stuff. If you haven't used it yet, give it a try. It's a two-part material similar to epoxy sculpt or, or magic sculpt, any of the sculpting epoxies, but it's just nice. It sets up fast. It's easy to manipulate and smooths out really, really well. So equal parts of A and B. I'm going to mix them up with a little bit of water and just kind of knead it together like bread dough. And somebody that knows a whole bunch more about epoxy can probably tell me why. But once you get this mixed with water and it's thoroughly mixed, it doesn't smooth out with water very well anymore. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why that is. But then after you initially mix it, then we use alcohol. Um, lacquer thinner would work. Um, safety solvent, safety solvent would work. Um, I don't like that kind that's too sweet. What did you say? Captain Morgan. That doesn't work? <laughs> he said it's too sweet. It used to help. Get sticky on the eyes. Yeah, yeah it, do, it, it does help with seminars. Not eye setting, though. Um, so I'm just going to backfill this eye orbit a little bit. Mandy, are you on I'm, that? I'm All right. Uh, and what do people think uh, of our new, uh, our new system here? That's... I've been watching you girls operate all these cameras, and it's fun to see. It's hard to get you guys to stand still with <laughs> your hands. Well, we're working on that. <laughs> Doing good. We need an X, like an X marks the spot, like a yeah. pirate treasure. Um, this is pretty intimidating having Gary Brock watch I know, us I know. make artificial I think reproduction fish who this guy is probably one of the finest fish molders and casters and reproduction makers in the world, I would have to say. And uh, we're pretty proud to have his... Uh, <laughs> what's that? I got it said. Uh, pretty proud to have his heads and his heads are exceptional detail. Inside, mouth detail, everything, they're great. They really Gary's are. pretty excited about our premium bedding fiber. Oh, it's yeah. Um, we've heard, we've had really good reviews. Gary's one of them. We've had reviews from I think Cole. Cole was one that um, has had a chance to work with it. Um, They're just flying off the shelf. Well, that's good because I saw a big old semi truck full of it. <laughs> we do have just a, south of this building, full of it. We do have a semi truck full of it too. Um, and that's really all that I've done. So um, check your eye angles for attitude, for um, level. I've got, I have the pupil somewhat horizontal here. I've pushed the bottom of the, of the eye in just slightly. I'm going to adjust the top so it's a little flatter to the head. And then one thing that kind of hate to see on a fish or these big eyelids. Fish don't have eyelids. The big old predators, you shape them into that brow. <laughs> eyebrows. Um, so take your eyebrows down a little bit if you can. And then um, we're just going to blend that back. I like to set the eye and get the eyeball in place. Let it harden and then come back around it with with epoxy and do some finish work at the very end. I'll blend this little ledge. I might even have to sand that just a little bit right there. And how but. long does it take for that clay clay epoxy to dry? Um, it will cure hard in... Faster than a lot of them. Yeah, 45 minutes. I think it'll be pretty set at room temperature. Um, it could be a little bit more. It could be a little bit less if you... I've used it in a hurry at home late at night and needed to sand it quick. And I'll put it in an oven, warm up the oven to 170 degrees and then shut it off and leave the door open a little bit, get the part in there, get all of my, get it all smooth exactly like I like it, set the piece in the oven with the door cracked open 
and it sets really fast. It'll set in 10 minutes. That explains it. Shh. When you had us over for pork chops and they <laughs> tasted like plastic, that, now I know why. Plastic pork chops. Hey. <laughs> so that's, that's really all we would do with that. You can look at the angle here too. Um, sorry, I'm... Jerry says, yes, the high fiber is awesome. I'm so happy you guys have the real veal. <laughs> we do. Um, it is. It's way way better than what we've been working with for several years is kind of interesting because I contacted probably six to eight different oh, plastics man. companies, you know, like uh, the Smooth On people and things like that, and said, what are people using? And they said, we don't know of any product. And I thought, are we the only ones that do this or what? There's got to be, maybe we're yeah. that far behind that. I guess um, so. But they, nobody, none of them had an explanation for me on. No. No. Jared Emery says the new cameras are good and the app is nice to have. Oh, the app. Phone. Holy smokes. Yeah. All Thanks, this Jared. technology. The app is super nice. That's easy to go find stuff to show people where stuff is at. Do they need we, Caitlin besides to tell them what their maybe. password is to download the app? Because I, I couldn't get my Don't forget, app. though, when you go to download, you have to do the five stars. Did you do that? Yes. You did the five stars? Yes. And what's that give me? It just, it's a nice feature that gives us a rating. Um, so they're, they're, they're basically they saying they appreciate us. What if I haven't used it? And I don't know if I want to rate it. Do I rate them after or we'll, when I sign up? We'll just do it for you. I think what <laughs> we need to do, now I have a suggestion. I think next week, you and I run the cameras. And Ooh, Mandy that'd be fun. And Caitlin oh my gosh. show off the app. That would be very fun, and I bet we'd have yeah. record views. We will, I bet we would. We will show you a whole process. It won't be anything gooey or gory. A whole process, <laughs> and the two of you, <laughs> I think it's funny already. The two of you do it, and we'll have to have help. Maybe. <laughs> we were practicing with cameras back here one day, and it was just us two, and Tony was watching in the background, and it was kind of fun. But we were being goofy. <laughs> um, I think that's a great well, idea. I think we should well, at least have them demonstrate the app. Everybody needs to go download the app because we are after Black Friday craziness. You're going to really want it for that. But we're also going to do something special for all those ordering and using the app. So make sure to get ahead of the game because we will definitely take advantage of our customers who are utilizing that. And I saw a whole big shipment of fire thread come in. Oh that's my, yeah. Yes, as well. yes. That's, um, that's, that's anybody, taxidermists sew everything. And uh, if you want the finest sewing thread for taxidermists. Or if you're going fishing. Or if you're going or fishing. Or if you're going yeah. fishing for stocking stuff or something, you don't want to go to the store because of the pandemic, just hop on our app and order some fire thread and you can use it for your fishing line. It's wonderful stuff. Something. Wonderful, it wonderful really stuff. Is. It really, really is. It's made by the premier fishing line manufacturer in the country and we were lucky enough to get them to put this together for us. It's pretty exciting. We should probably do a live on that too. After the app. After can, the girls. We'll the take, girls can sew. You can take. Yeah, I cannot sew. We can take four pound test, hang it from the ceiling and put a board on it and I bet it will hold a person. Maybe not. Maybe we have to do the 25 or Perhaps something. The 20. 20. Yeah, <laughs> a little person, maybe Emerson. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, if uh, if you guys want to go back and catch all of your seams, we got a little distracted, but yep. um, catch your seams with uh, epoxy. Um, if you have any any flashing there, it's a great time to run around it with um, a little sandpaper, mm -hmm. um, little needle files, anything you might need that way, and get this thing ready to paint. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll probably. We'll maybe have one painted partially, and we'll have uh, show them how to paint one. We'll maybe put fins on, and um, yeah, next time. I think that would be a good one is to show them how um, we can do those fin unions, so they can have just a nice, easy um, attachment and of their paired fins. These are so fun to make that when you get one out, like I did, you think, "Oh, that was fun. I'm going to make another one quick. It'll only take a second. And I mean, we've made three just goofing around. You know, four you can make. Four of them, yes. Four. Can that make. mold will last forever and ever? No, but it'll last forever. 
Um, one, one forever. Okay. You know what? One thing while we have just a second, too, to tell them. Depending upon how your mold looks, we didn't mention going back and refining your Bondo before making the positive. And most of the time, your positive is going to be just fine. Um, everything will pop out real good. But you can see on the crappie, we have just a little bit of Bondo broken out behind. That was your favorite the crappie. You wanted it that is, mold, too. It really is. Um, a little bit behind the maxillary bone, a little in front. You can fix those in the mold, um, either fill them in with an epoxy or sand them nice and smooth. Sometimes all those little fin ray bumps are, are rough. Um, you can fix that mold before you ever pour a positive out of it, and then it won't chip, it won't break. You What's won't have little pieces. What's the reason that that happens? Um, nope, it's just an undercut that couldn't come out completely um, straight out of a rigid mold. So you'll, you'll encounter that, and it's... It's not a big deal, but you can come back and fix we're that making, first. We're making a solid part out of a solid mold, so any kind of undercut is a hindrance yep. to you and is going to cause you issues. If we were making it out of a rubber mold, it would pull right out. Or if we were making a rubber fish out of that mold, it would pull right out. Yep. yep. And um, for you guys that were here when we did the first one, we mentioned um, a good fresh fish to make a cast of is great, not only for the reproduction itself, but really good for reference material. And if you look at the crappie, I don't know if we can get in there very close, but he's got a great eye set, really nice angle here. Um, you can see that, that the depth of this eye is similar to what we were shooting for here with the bluegill. So and these you make the small really good. part of the eye, the pupil of the eye, small part, right toward the mouth, or which part of the mouth are you aiming it toward? Um, technically, that eye will try to level. So if he tips his head down like this, the the pupil will come back to horizontal. So it might be flat here, or it, if he were up here, it'll still be horizontal. So you need to decide so the it, position of the fish before you. Yep. Yep. So your Very theory good on point. the driftwood of turning it doesn't work. That's bad, huh? <laughs> but she the new, you. No, no, no. The new eyes. Have you seen the new eyes? Oh, with the level? The mercury-filled eyes level. that you turn, and they automatically do that. I'm in. I know you are. No, you are. Any idea the, we have. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so there's some there's great reference there. And, and make, your, make your molds for work for you for practice. Um, practice painting, practice finishing. Um, reference material, lots of reasons to make reproduction um, fish molds for the shop. Um, they're great to have in the showroom, show people what you've got and what you can do. And when you take these out of the mold, you kind of get overwhelmed because you have something like this and you think your heart just sinks. Like, oh, what am I going to do with that? First thing, trim off that fin. This is a three minute job to get yep. to there. Now, all you have to check and repair is this amount. Hardly anything there, hardly anything there in this yeah. amount. And yeah. it's a matter of sanding. Get your good magnifying glasses and check for your sanding scratches because you might yeah. want to go down a little bit. Which are Do back in stock, by the way. Oh, the lighted ones? Mm -hmm. oh. oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Do your epoxy work. Yeah. Trim your fins and pay attention to the shape of your fins, the shape of your web webbing all that different stuff, and all of a sudden, before you know it, um, this looks overwhelming, and there's not half hour's worth of work. You're going to have this yeah. looking awful, awful good. To get good. here. Hey, do we have a giveaway? Yes. We do. I know what we should do. So we had somebody ask, they want you to do another updated pan pastel oh, yeah. painting one. Well, we picked two of our new kits in the new catalog, which isn't out yet, but we picked the top 10 colors, sale colors, that everyone's their favorite go-to, and that is now in a 10-piece kit, along with a five-piece, so the top five colors. So you can buy it in a five- or 10-piece kit, but why don't we give away the five-piece top colors? Because wow. they're in stock and ready to go. So if you're wondering, should I would really like to try them, I don't know what colors to get, well, you can't go wrong with the top-selling color kit because it has everybody's favorites in there. Perfect. Wow, that's Do pretty it. fun. So who's the winner of that? Karen Sanders. Karen, Karen, Karen Sanders. She probably we know has her. them all. Is that a girl? <laughs> um, so in order to get in our drawings for our 
giveaways, you must like, share, and share this video. So make sure to do that. And download the app. All our new products are on the app too, right? Yes. yes. Everything's catalog, in? Yeah. Well, yeah, the catalog's in the process of getting done, so you should hopefully have that at the end, end, end of November, beginning December. Apparently they all have COVID at the printers. <laughs> so they all work from home. Um, but we are getting questions with this COVID. Are you guys going to stay open? Yada, yada. We are day by day with what our governor says we can do. And right now we are open and running and getting everything out for you guys. So take advantage of that. Next week, next week we're doing our Black Friday, but there's no live on Thursday. The boys and I will be doing live on Wednesday with our stuff. Exciting new Black fun Friday stuff. cool Black stuff. Friday Ooh. Cool stuff. There's a lot. Ooh, that'll be a fun one. And then you're going to show them how to use the app? Yeah. We should show them how to how use, use the, the app. app. You got yep. to get the app downloaded because we are going to be doing giveaways for people. We can tell who orders from the app and who orders from their computer. Ooh. So make sure you start taking the Was that that little map you had with all those people all over the. That's our store. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All over the continent. I mean, there's all people in Canada. Canada. There's people in Europe. There's, I mean, the map shows you. Everywhere. It's fun to see. But anyway, take advantage of that. And uh, the live will be next Wednesday. And the thing with our Black Friday, you guys, is you're going to want to tune in because as soon as we sign off, all our sales and products and stuff are live. They will go live. You'll have the option. But it's first come, first serve, and we have limited quantities. So really make sure you tune in to catch the deals because they won't last because we can't keep up with that. <laughs> We know. <laughs> we'll do what we can. <laughs> um, anything else we got? What's next? So next week is Thanksgiving. One more, one more of this to uh, put something yeah. together. All right. Yeah. So give us a call if you have any questions. The stuff the guys talked about tonight is on sale through tomorrow night at 15% off. So the bedding fiber. Um, what else is on there? The clay clay, the isocote. So take advantage of that. And thanks for tuning in. As always, we so appreciate you guys, and we'll catch you next week. Happy Thanksgiving almost. 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 Thank you, everybody. Congratulations.